Welcome back to our discussion on investing in green battery technology. Now we've just heard from three public companies who each supply the raw elements needed to build green batteries, batteries that could help fight against climate change. Joining us now is mining analyst Luisa Moreno from Jacob Securities, who will now tell us if our guest stories are as powerful as they claim. So Luisa, yes. I met with Karam earlier, and he's the battery expert, but you are here on behalf of mining, mining experts. So you've heard what our panel has to say, you've assessed it, and I'm sure you've got some questions to fire their way. Um, so I was listening to the Rodinian story. You know, I, I heard that before as well. Uh, and I understand that you're doing now the, the PA, right? The Preliminary Economic Assessment. So um, I would like to know maybe if you know at this stage, what sort of costs uh, you expecting and CapEx as well? Sure. Uh, we released the uh, PEA at the beginning of uh, November. Uh, we were very, uh, very happy with the results. We outlined two uh, potential production scenarios, um, the, uh, the largest being 25,000 tonnes a year of lithium, lithium carbonate, uh, which comes with 51,000 tonnes of potash uh, along with it as a, a co-product. Um, and the, the numbers were great. The uh, net present value with an 8% discount was just under a billion dollars. Um, the IRR is healthy at 36%. And uh, capital costs for that uh, type of production is uh, 220 million with um, uh, healthy operating costs about uh, $1,500 a ton of lithium. When you sell the co-products though, we can get to a stage where the lithium actually comes to, to the company for free. Uh, so we would have negative $700 of cash costs, essentially allowing us to stockpile the lithium, not sell anything, and still make a profit. And uh, what sort of a, what was the price that you use in your in your PA? We're using a long-term uh, lithium carbonate price of $5,500. 55. Okay. Um, I understand that Energizer is in quiet period right now as you work in your PA. Yes. Um, but perhaps you could. Um, uh, tell us uh, a little bit about Madagascar, what sort of um, uh, country risk might be there, uh, and uh, perhaps also comment uh, in terms of infrastructure. Um, sure, well, Ma Madagascar, as everybody knows, is one of the fourth largest islands in the world, and we're just situated in the south part of that, and where we're located actually is in an area where there's no rainforest whatsoever. It's dry savanna. We have minimal flora, fauna, very low population density, and there is some existing infrastructure. There is some uh, established roadways. Uh, there's two large projects right now that are in Madagascar. Rio Tinto has an Ilmenite Sands project, about a billion dollars worth of investment to that project. They've been in the country for about 10 years, and Sherrod has their Mbadavi, which is their nickel laterate project, about 5.6 billion now, and they're up located in the, in the north east part of the uh, of the um, island, and we are un very much unlike them. We're not in the rainforest, so we have, uh, you know, a very low environmental footprint. Uh, there is a water system uh, very nearby, a very large river system. There is a port about 100 kilometers away from our project, and serendipitously, we have a very large coal project. Uh, it's actually a series of three coal projects being developed by three very large Thai companies that are being uh, built in the next uh, two years. We estimate they have bankable feasibilities completed. Okay. by a company called DRA Mineral Projects, which is uh, well advanced. It would be like the SNC Lavalin of, of the Africas. And uh, they're developing those projects and uh, will be located about 30 kilometers away from them. So while we're not dependent on infrastructure, certainly those would be, uh, would add some, uh, some infrastructure synergies for our project. Um, Louisa, you being the expert and all, um, would you say there are any risks in, for investors in investing early um, in any of these companies or rather would there be, I don't know, an upside to it? Would there be an, a benefit? There's always a risk. Um, so they're all uh, a uh, few years away. I understand Rodinia uh, four years away to, to production. Uh, we're targeting uh, mid to late 2015. Okay. Uh, in case of Energizer? Yeah, we're uh, targeting uh, late 2014. So uh, between now and then, so we don't really know what's going to happen to, to the prices, and that obviously influenced uh, the economics of, uh, of their projects. So that, that in, in that sense, there's definitely a risk. Right. Did you provide me with some examples of some big winners in the recent past that you know of? And uh, Company-wise? Yes. Um, well, the, the companies I actually look at, a lot of, of them are specialty metals. Right. And, and this is actually a pretty fairly new uh, space. Okay. Um, so there are, there's been significant um, advancements in, in some of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's not, 
I unfortunately I cannot name one winner yet, and you know, and I'm talking about the rare earth, uh, the vanadium, the graphite. So, it, the specialty metals is fairly new. Uh, I think we will start seeing some, mm -hmm. uh, but for now, um, not yet. I would say uh, another important uh, factor is that. Um, the market, the main market for some uh, of these products is, is China um, mm -hmm. and understanding what's going on in China and believing that story uh, is somehow, I believe, uh, also related to um, believing in vanadium and lithium. I, I believe you probably agree with me, I would think, no? Okay, so Louisa, those investing right now, what would be your number one, um, I guess, piece of advice you <laughs> give them when investing? I know there's so many um, taken into account risk, but what would be the number one thing to look out for? Well, it's important to understand the potential for, for, for vanadium, lithium, graphite, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, and then um, understand the economics of each project. Right. Um, so for those that have a PEA out, is really looking at the preliminary, the preliminary economic assessment and right. then the feasibilities and the bank, bankable uh, uh, feasibility studies that I believe uh, um, Northern Graphite is working in, uh, in a bankable feasibility, which is more um, accurate than uh, you know, uh, the, the, initial, the initial ones, right? Uh, so th those are the kind of things that they should definitely be looking. Understand okay. competitors as well. The time to market uh, in some yeah. of these uh, in some of these um, areas. It's important to know um, who are the, the, the individual companies that are more advanced re in relation to the other ones because mm -hmm. there's only so much demand, right? So right. understanding what the demand is and what stage each project is, the costs. The and demand, the stages, the background, as much information as possible. Yes, right, and, and then, the of course, the management team as well is important. Right? Of course. So any last words, gentlemen, any final thoughts? Well, I would say uh, just on that uh, investor education front that yeah. uh, a few years ago, uh, nobody knew anything about lithium or rare earths or graphite, mm -hmm. and there's been a tremendous education process for the whole market. And so it's part of a process that investors go through, and uh, that's what you have to do to find new opportunities. Well, good, and that's thank awesome. you. That's why we're here today. So I want to thank our guests for joining us today. Thank you so much. And that's our show. So you've heard what they have to say. Now the rest is up to you. To learn more about each of the company's profile today, visit their website or speak with your certified financial advisor and get all the facts before you invest. And then join us next week when we will introduce you to three more publicly traded companies that you can invest in and who might just be the next biggest winner. Until then, I'm Andra Nescu. Good night.